So I didn't bring you along at first, but now I want to show you a couple things on this Denon in command series integrated network AV receiver AVRX 4300. Look at all the stuff that's inside this guy. So it's got one power amplifier board right here. It has another power amplifier board right here. And if you look down here, you'll see a couple of fans because it's probably going to need them. Uh, per each channel, that's a very small heat sink. And then we've got all the digital processing right back here. All right, look at all those chips on that board. Over here, the power supply, the power transformer. Underneath there, probably hard to see. A couple of big filter caps. And then over here, if you look right down in the right down in there you'll see a bunch of regulators there's probably six of them leaning up back in there anyhow what this thing does so I've got the blinking red light of death when I press the power button it goes completely solid red the next press I get blinking white light continuing blinking white light and then shut down and red blinks again. So looking at the display, AV surround, cable sat stereo, display goes blank, and then the power goes off, and I get the blinky blink red once again. Okay, so one of the things I see right off the bat is look at that resistor. That's a low value resistor, two, two point something, maybe 22 ohms. Looks like red, red, black, but look right in the middle of that. You'll see a big melt spot. I'm trying to move the light around so you can get a better view at it, but that looks bad. Take a look at this one. This is the sister to the other one, and I clearly see a red band and an orange band, and the black, as I'm moving the light around here, appears that it has a burn spot on it. So I'm thinking the first order of business is to pull the power amplifier board out of this unit and we'll actually take a look at those resistors and see if they're bad or not. So I'm thinking it may not be that bad to get the power amplifier board out of this unit. It looks like I can remove these two ribbon cables and they're both going to just fold out. Every major lead on this unit either is plugged into another board or, very hard to see, but that white connector with the red lead in it right there, it's plugged onto this board. There's one just like it that you probably can't see right in here. And so I'm thinking if I just pull the screws out of the power amplifier unit and unplug everything else, it'll just simply lift out of the unit. All right, well, it was just as easy as unplugging these connectors, moving the ribbon cables up out of the way. Uh, the white connectors go on uh, this far-facing side of the board, and the red connectors go on this face of the board. So there are several of them. All right, well I've got the board up here in slightly better lighting and if you look at that resistor you can definitely see a defect as well as that one right there. Now all the rest of them look absolutely fine except for maybe, maybe being mangled. Okay, so I've got my voltmeter in the 600 ohm range because I'm going to be measuring 22 ohm resistors. I'll short the leads out. Lead integrity is about three tenths of an ohm. And so I'm just going to go ahead and test one of these over here that is a known good resistor. And we see 22.2 ohms, which is absolutely perfect. One of the bad resistors right here. I get 30.2 ohms. And then the other one right here. It is open. Let's put it back in auto range. Wow, not even on the Magom scale do I get anything at all. Uh, for the heck of it, let's go ahead and check the emitter resistors, which are these large 0.47 ohm resistors. So it should come up to pretty close to zero. And that one's open. That one's open. 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 Okay, so over here is a known good channel. And I see 
these are in parallel, so they better both read the same. Yes. Okay, so I know we've got open driver resistors and open emitter resistors. Uh, so here's the output transistors. It's easy enough just to put this on the diode range. And we'll just measure these transistors. That one is shorted, collector emitter. What's interesting is base to collector emitter is not shorted right now. Nothing on reverse polarity, so the base is still fine. We'll check this one. Let's change the leads. That one's a dead short. So we're going to have to pull this board off to be able to get these output transistors. This is a bias current regulating transistor which is why it's on the heat sink. So with transistors as they heat up and cool down their gain changes ever so slightly. And with this type of amplifier you want to keep each transistor barely biased on. So I think it'll be pretty easy. We can gain access to all the power transistor screws right through these holes here and then it's got a couple of other screws. And so I don't have to take and unsolder every single one of these transistors if we can go ahead and pull the majority of them off the board. Well, they certainly came off easy. They seem to have adequate heat sinking compound on them. Well, let's go ahead and get those two bad ones unsoldered off the board. That way we can get to the bottom of it. And uh, it's got some drivers and pre-drivers and whatnot. We're gonna wanna check those as well. I have the meter on the diode range. I should get a solid tone. Okay, so all I really care about is whether it's shorted or not. So I'm going to check collector emitter and just go down the line. We may see diodes. We may see resistances. Those are the two bad ones. So those all check good. Just for the heck of it, we'll go ahead and check the bias tracking transistor. We all check about the same. They're all in the 590 something range. Yep, even that one. Okay, so let's go ahead and get these transistors unsoldered off the board so we can get access back here and check some of these other small components. Alright, so anytime I pull a transistor off of one of these boards, I'm going to take a look at the number, whether it's a 2S, A, B, C, or D, and I'm going to make a note somewhere on the board that corresponds to which transistor goes where. Now we can get them back in the right place when we get the replacements. So for sure we know that these guys are bad. That's a dead short. That's a dead short. So let's move those out of the way. We'll go ahead and quickly test this bias tracking transistor. I see a junction there. I see a junction there. And I don't see a short here, which is good. So I'm going to call that one good. All right, well, I did manage to find a schematic on this unit, even though it was made in 2016. And so here are the two output transistors, Q7131, that's the 2SD2560, and Q7132, that's the 2SB1647. Now, this is the idling current bias transistor right here, the one that we tested, and was actually, it tested good. I'm a bit concerned because the base, which may have taken a small amount of current, it it had to burn up these two resistors right here. So we had to have some current feeding back here to burn up these resistors. One much more so than the other one. And so really the only path this has to go is across this transistor into the other output transistor. Because we're limited here by a 2.7K resistor, that says it's open. Yeah, we're into another small transistor. Uh, these are the two driver transistors. We'll test those just to see what they test like. They're actually slightly larger transistors on the other side of the board. So let's just go ahead and test those right now. Once again, I'm in the diode range. Hopefully I won't get in the way of seeing the meter. Good junction. 
Good junction. And good. All right. Good junction. Good junction. And open. It's exactly what I wanted to see. So it looks like the driver transistors are actually okay. So usually when that happens, that means everything from here back is just fine. It does look like if you look very closely here, these are the emitter resistors where they soldered to the board. This channel is darker than any of the other channels, so I'm wondering if he was having an overloading problem for quite some time on this unit, which would cause these emitter resistors to get fairly warm. I'll have to question him about that. So it looks like at this point, we just need a couple of output transistors, and I'll probably go ahead and replace that bias current tracking transistor at the same time. All right, so I have a C3964, a D2560, a B1647, a couple of 22 ohm flame proof resistors, and four 0.47 ohm 2 watt emitter resistors. So we'll go ahead and install those on the board and see if we can get this unit to power up and stay on and make sound. Okay, so I have the new resistors, the 22 ohm resistors and the 0.47 ohm emitter resistors installed on the board. Now I'm not going to go ahead and install the transistors at this time. I want to go ahead and put those on the heat sink first to make sure that they match with the board correctly in case I have to bend the leads slightly. I don't want any extra stress on the circuit board. So I'll mount those to the heat sink, mount the rest of the transistors, and then bend the leads as necessary, and then solder them to the bottom side of the board over here. Okay, so I have the two power transistors and the bias regulator transistor mounted to the heat sink right now. I've got the leads just kind of tentatively bent up as necessary. I've got fresh compound on them. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and mount the board and we'll mount all the rest of the other power transistors at the same time. All right, now I'll go ahead and solder them in. All right, that looks good. They're all mounted. Let's go ahead and put it back in the unit now. And we'll fire it up and see if we get better results. Okay, all back together, power is restored. Let's hit the power button. And there it is, up and running. So I'm gonna let it run for a few minutes, and then we'll go ahead and adjust the idling current, the bias current for the transistors. We'll go ahead and check the rest of the channels and make sure they're okay as well. Okay, so the service manual tells me I'm supposed to adjust the bias for eight millivolts. So let's go ahead and adjust all the channels right now. Actually, it says eight plus or minus two millivolts. So 7.8, that's pretty good. That was perfect. Okay, I think that's close enough. So it's been running now for about 20 or 30 minutes. To let it get good and up to temperature, you're supposed to check it within a couple of minutes, and then again, after 20 minutes of runtime, it's working perfectly fine. So I think it's gonna be ready to reassemble and ship back to the customer. All right, so it's all back together. It's got audio. I'm not playing any copyright-free audio, so I'm not gonna turn it up, but it's up and running, it powers up. Idling current's adjusted, everything's good. Hopefully the customer will be good now. 
I did ask the customer to bring in the speaker that was connected to the front left and that's the channel that was blown out so we'll probably uh, see a video on testing the speaker if not repairing the speaker. Anyhow, all wrapped up, ready to go. I want to give a sincere thank you to all those who have supported my channel with a donation via PayPal or having me repair your unit. If you enjoyed this video please consider subscribing to my channel and liking this video. It really helps my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at NorCal715. You can also shoot me an email, norcal715videos at gmail.com. Go ahead and leave me a comment, a question, a concern down below. I'll try to read all the comments and respond when I certainly have time. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody have a great day. Thanks for watching once again. I really appreciate it. Bye-bye.